Are you thinking of moving to Spain to work, study, invest or just to enjoy the sun and the commodities of this great country? Would you like to know what options you have to get the Spanish residence permit? In today's video, I'm going to explain all the options you have to obtain the Spanish residence and we will see the general documentation you will need to start your process to move to Spain as a non-EU citizen, the different types of visas you can apply to depending on your purpose and what happens with your family once you get it, among other issues related to it. So stay tuned! What's up everybody, this is Pablo Jurado from the Keller Williams Realty Group in the northwest of Madrid. I've been living here in Madrid for over 30 years and I live and love this city every single day. No doubt Spain has always been a very requested destination for many people who want to study, work or spend the last stage of their lives enjoying the sun, good food and tranquility that this country offers. If this is your case, do watch this video completely. And of course, if you're thinking of moving to the Madrid Metro, don't hesitate, give us a call, send us an email or fill out the form in our website livinginmadridspain.com. You have the information in the description down below. We absolutely love to help people relocate or invest in the Madrid area and we can make that transition so much easier for you. Ok, let's dive into it. No doubt, Spain is a beautiful country with a rich culture, history and diverse landscapes, making it an attractive destination for people from all over the world. Whether you're looking to study, work or start a new chapter in your life, Spain has a lot to offer. But before arriving in Spain, there are many things to consider, from obtaining the right visa or finding a place to live to adjusting to a new culture and language. It's important to be well informed and prepared to ensure a smooth transition. I've already covered some of these aspects in my previous videos, such as the cost of living, healthcare, best neighborhoods in Madrid, but today I want to explain the different types of visas available as well as the documentation you will need to gather in order to apply for them. The first step to start the immigration process to move to Spain as a non-EU person, you will need to gather the following documents and information. You will need a valid passport with at least 3 months validity beyond your intended stay in Spain. Depending on your purpose and length of your stay, you will need to apply for a specific type of visa. I will cover the different types of visa in a minute. You will need to show that you have enough money to support yourself during your stay in Spain without relying on public funds. This can be demonstrated in different ways depending on the kind of visa that you have chosen. You will need to provide evidence of where you will be staying in Spain, such as a proof of property ownership in Spain, a rental agreement or a letter from a host. You will also need to have health insurance that covers you during your stay in Spain and you may be required to provide criminal background check from your home country. But these are only the general aspects that you will need to comply, no matter the visa you apply for, but let's see them case by case. First of all, I will highlight the different kinds of visas available with a very brief description of each of them and then I'll go to in into details for each one. There are several types of visas when moving to Spain, including the tourist visa for individuals who want to visit Spain for a short period of time for tourism or business purposes. I'm not going to explain this visa as it is not the purpose of this video. You got the student visa for people who want to study in Spain for a period of more than three months. You got the, the working visa for individuals who want to work in Spain on a full-time basis and this work is provided by someone else's company. You got the entrepreneur's visa for people who want to start a business in Spain. You have also the non-lucrative visa for individuals who want to live in Spain for a longer period of time but do not intend to work or carry out any business activities that generate income. You also got the family reunion visa for spouse and children of Spanish residents who wish to join them in Spain. And last, you got the Spanish Golden Visa, which is a residency program for non-EU citizens which allows them to obtain residency in Spain through a significant investment in the country, such as investing in Spanish government bonds, real estate properties, Spanish company, etc. 
Now, I'm not going to cover this special type of visa in this video either, because I already made a specific video talking about it. So if you're interested in it, you only have to press this link up here. A student visa in Spain is a type of visa that allows foreign students to study in the country for a specific period of time. Despite the general requirements I talked about before, to be eligible for a student visa in Spain, you must also have been accepted into a recognized Spanish educational institution and have proof of enrollment. Also, depending on the language of instruction at the educational institution, you may need to provide proof of proficiency in Spanish, Catalan, or another official language. As for financial means, you must show proof of sufficient financial means to yourself and your dependents during your stay in Spain. This may include proof of funds, scholarship, or sponsorship. A work visa in Spain is a type of visa that allows foreign nationals to work and live in the country for a specific period of time. Despite the general requirements I talked about before, to be eligible for a working visa in Spain, you will also need a valid job offer from a Spanish employer. Now, this employer must have the necessary work permit and provide proof of the job offer to you. Now, the entrepreneur visa in Spain is a type of visa designed for foreign nationals who want to start a business or invest in an existing business in the country. This visa allows entrepreneurs to live and work in Spain for a specific period of time while they establish and run their businesses. Despite the general requirements I talked about before, to be eligible for an entrepreneur visa in Spain, you will also need a well-defined business plan to demonstrate the viability of this business idea. And as for financial means, you must not only show proof of sufficient financial means for yourself and your dependents during your stay in Spain, but also to invest in the business. The non-lucrative visa in Spain is a specific type of visa designed for foreign nationals who want to live in Spain but do not intend to work or carry out any business activities that generate income. This visa is often used by retirees, investors or those who wish to spend extended periods of time in the country. One of the main advantages of this kind of visa is that you don't need to gather any specific papers apart from the general documentation mentioned before. Although, in the financial means chapter, you do have to show proof of sufficient financial means to support yourself and your dependents without engaging in any business activities that generate income. This typically involves demonstrating a steady source of passive income such as rental income, pension or investment. The family reunion visa is a type of visa that allows foreign nationals to join a family member who is a legal resident in Spain. The family member who is already living in Spain must be Spanish citizen or hold a valid residence permit. Despite the general requirements I talked about before, to be eligible for a family reunion visa in Spain, you will also must provide proof of a recognized family relationship with a family member who is already living in Spain, such as marriage certificate, birth certificate, or any other official documentation. In the financial means chapter, the family member who is already living in Spain must provide proof of sufficient financial means to support you and his or her other dependents. To obtain a visa in Spain, you will typically be required to have health insurance that provides coverage in the country. The specific type of health insurance required will depend on the type of visa you're applying for. But in general, it must be comprehensive health insurance that covers medical treatment, hospitalization, and repatriation in case of an emergency. Public health insurance in Spain, known as the National Health System, does cover the health needs of Spanish citizens and legal residents, but it may not be accepted as proof of insurance for visa purposes. I recommend you to check with the Spanish Embassy or Consulate in your country of origin to confirm the specific health insurance requirements for the type of visa you are applying for. In some cases, private health insurance that meet the requirements set by the Spanish government may be accepted for visa purposes. It's important to carefully review the requirements and to purchase a policy that meets the specific requirements of the visa you are applying for. For this specific issue, we usually work with a health insurance company 
that offers specific plans for expats and meet all the requirements needed in this area in all cases. So if you want, we can refer you to them. Okay, the visa application fee for Spain depends on the type of visa and the country from where you're applying. The fee may also change from time to time, so I recommend you to check the most up-to-date information, but to get you an idea, the fees usually vary from 60 to 100 euros, except for the student visa, which is half that price. The process of obtaining a criminal background certificate depends on the country where you reside. But in general, you will need to follow these steps. In most countries, you can obtain a criminal background certificate from the local police or judicial authorities. You can contact them to ask about the specific requirements and procedures for obtaining a criminal background certificate. You will typically need to fill out an application form and provide certain personal information, such as your name, date of birth, and address. You may also be required to provide additional documents such as government-issued photo ID, proof of address, and fingerprints. And most countries charge a fee for a criminal background certificate. The amount of the fee depends on the country. Now, once you have submitted the application form, the processing time for a criminal background certificate will, once again, vary depending on the country, but it can take several weeks or months to receive the certificate, so it's a good idea to anticipate to this issue and ask for it as soon as possible. Once the certificate is ready, you can pick it up in person or have it mailed to you. The certificate will include information about any criminal records or convictions you may have. And this is it for the moment. We are going to leave it here, but it's very important to note once again that the specific requirements for a visa in Spain may vary depending on your country of origin, the type of visa you want to apply to, and other factors, so I really recommend you to check with the Spanish Embassy or Consulate in your country of origin for the most up-to-date information to ensure that you have all the necessary documents to apply for that visa in particular. And of course, we can also help you with that. Remember that we are local real estate experts here, and if you have any question, if you're thinking of moving to the Madrid Metro, reach us any way you want. We'd love to help you out to find your ideal place to live, and we can also help you with the acquisition of your visa. But we can only do that if you reach out to us. Give us a call, send us an email, or fill out the form in our website, livinginmadridspain.com. You have all the information in the description down below. However you do it, we got you covered when moving to the Madrid Metro. Also, don't forget to check our other videos and subscribe to our channel and press the ring bell to receive notifications about all our upcoming content. Until the next video, catch you later.